You're listening to Campus Conversations. Joined in studio, Chris Poor. That's me. Of Frail State. That's also me. That's both of you. <laughs> All two of me. <laughs> That's right. So Frail State, that is... I always struggle with this. Is it? Would you consider it a band, a project, or just a solo endeavor? I also struggle with that. <laughs> I, I have referred to it as a project and a band, really, because like it fits regardless. Mm-hmm. So I don't really get too picky about it. So yeah, call it what you want. I call it a band. I'm an artist, Frail State. That's, it's your music. Yeah, pretty much. You are Frail State, and but you're also a first year radio broadcasting student. I am, so I'm not a stranger around here. That's right. Now, as cool as that is, I would love to hear about this music. So talk about Frail State. When did this start? Why did it start? Frail State started last year in about July. That's when the idea came around. I didn't start recording until about September. Um, I had been making music for a long time before that, um, but it, there's been like a gap of time. Uh, I was never really happy with what I did before, and, and then I kind of stopped for a while, but then I kind of came back because I started getting inspired again, and, like listen, hearing a bunch of new things I hadn't heard before, and then just what I'm doing now, I feel way more comfortable about way happier with and yeah it is what it is right now awesome cool stuff so i've been i checked out your music and i i mean i couldn't pinpoint exactly what the genre would be i mean i'm terrible with genres as it is yeah but i heard some like element you you can you say it's got some elements of like nine inch nails kind of yeah pretty much now i hate comparing music to other bands but how would you um describe your music uh i probably like it literally is kind of just moody music. Yeah, like, it's it, it can be very like aggressive. Yeah, it's very, got a very dark atmosphere to it. But then there's also like some quieter moments to it. So yeah, it, it has like a varying balance of like how heavy to how soft it can get. Mm-hmm. But it's all within like the industrial rock realm, I guess. So that's super cool. All right, so this is you said it's kind of a more recent ish endeavor that you've like you had music you were making before yeah so frail state's just over a year old right now over a year old and like i have an ep out already that came out in march and then there's two singles coming out uh in december it's like a just a double single set Uh uh-huh and that's one of the songs i'll be playing today oh really cool really cool stuff so as a as like a solo artist and clearly there's a lot more than just um like if you were to have you done any live shows yet and Unfortunately not. <laughs> so that, that's got to be a hard thing to do as a solo artist, especially when it's not just uh, like like an acoustic guitar. You have a lot going on. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, like I have a small studio set up uh, in my own home. Uh, so yeah, I have to do all the guitars, bass. I have to record the vocals, drum programming. I do the mixing, the mastering. It is a daunting task, but a task I enjoy. So I don't think about it too much when I do it. Yeah, and I guess you don't have to worry about like kind of like compromising with other if you were in a bigger like a group you might have compromise with different sounds you know what i mean yeah. to like make your song you can't it's not it's not just you but your music is just you yeah and that is kind of a pro and con only just because sometimes it is good to have that feedback because if you get into your own head too much you stay in your comfort zone and that could be a problem leading down the road sure because like if then you'll just keep producing the same thing. It's kind of like a what Rolodex Darko, the guy said earlier right. about kind of doing that. But the idea is, um, yeah, it, it can be a pro and con. Pro because I do enjoy making what I hear in my head, mm-hmm. and a con because sometimes I do miss the feedback. But I, I do have like a lot of musician friends, and sometimes I'll like kind of slip them a track and be like, "What do you think about this?" Blah blah blah. Like and just try to get some sort of feedback on it. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So since like you are the only person working on this, like. How, in, in, in being in radio broadcasting right now, like how much time do you have to work on your work? Like, is this something that you're hoping to make a career out of? Is it just a passion project? I, I honestly wouldn't expect a career out of it. Do you know where it's leading? I should ask, <laughs> or plans to lead? Honestly, no. I'm just kind of letting it take me at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to keep releasing music. I'm going to keep making it. And uh, with your question of like, how much time do I have for it? Uh, great question. Not a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because yeah, school's very busy. I have a job too. Because again, I'm not really making money off it. Like I, I have sold albums on like Bandcamp and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I make money off of Spotify or money, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> um, not enough to oh, solely pay the bills. No, I don't even think I could buy a box of Lucky Charms with that. <laughs> not yet, at least, right? <laughs> no, but um. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't know if it's going to lead anywhere too big, but it's something I want to keep doing. But I am going to keep like playing. I don't play live yet, but I would like to play live eventually. Mm-hmm. Like that is a plan. That's one of the bigger ones coming up. So if you were to play it live, you would have to recruit others, or would you have oh. some of the tracks pre-recorded? I would definitely recruit others. I don't want to be the one guy on stage. I'd, like 
no disrespect to anyone who does that. I just think it looks kind of funny. Yeah. And I don't want to be that guy up there doing it. For sure, yeah. Like, I, I've known people who do one-man shows like that, and it, they've sounded great. And like, So I have I can't really talk badly about it, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't anyway. But uh, yeah, I would rather recruit people. But yeah, there would also be some like pre-recorded stuff playing because there's some certain things that would have to be triggered in that can't necessarily be played live. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. Like that. Fair enough. So even just looking at your Spotify music, you have Fall Where They May, which would be just a single. Yeah, that that was on the EP. Though that was the lead single for the EP. The lead single. Then you have Ritual. Yes. That came out, also, and that would be a single off the same EP? Yeah, what's funny about that is Ritual was supposed to be the second single, mm-hmm. but then, like, here again, the song, another song from the EP, just kind of took its place, and I, I was, at first I was like, why is this happening? But then I just kind of went with it. I was like, whatever, if you like that better, then you like it better. Okay, so when, when you're, like, almost picking the single, is it just, like, this is the first song I made, therefore I'm going to release it as the single, or do you have a bunch of the so- songs in the works, and you already know, this is going to be my single, this is going to be my single... Um, I, I guess to answer that differently, I suppose, uh, the, it, is yes, I did have Fall Where They May written first. Like, that was the very first song I ever wrote as mm-hmm. Real State. Um, I didn't think of it as being the single. But, uh, I don't know, it just had some catchy quality to it, and I, uh, it was short enough, too. So I was like, you know what, this one this one can work. Like, I can make this work. Cool. So you have the Frail State self-titled EP? Yes. Not a full-on album, though. No, it was originally supposed to be a full album, but uh, just because of time and wanting to get ideas out there as quickly as possible before it became too convoluted, yeah, uh, I just decided to cut it down to six, because it was supposed to be 13 songs altogether. Okay, fair enough. So this song that we're about to play, I Die, You Die, will this at some point come out released under the same EP, or is this going to be a separate... Well, actually, funny enough, one thing I've been thinking of, it is going to be separate because it's like a double single set, uh, and it's coming out towards uh, December 20th, I think is the date. I'm I'm glad I can remember the old dates of my music. <laughs> anyway, um, what I was considering doing to anyone who wanted to check out the EP on Bandcamp, because uh, uh, frailstate.bandcamp.com, um, basically, I was going to add in the two singles as a bonus if you buy the album on Bandcamp. Oh, very but cool. But you could also buy the single separately if you wanted to. Sure. Cool. Now, before we play the song, can you tell us anything a little bit about this song, I Die, You Die? What's the meaning behind it? Maybe some of the inspirations? Yeah, so I Die, You Die is actually a cover by Gary Newman. Okay. Uh, so I've known of Gary Newman for a long time, but like I somehow had missed this song for a while. Hmm. So I started hearing it about mid-April to May, and then I was like... Not only do I like this, but I think I could actually pull this off if I wanted to cover. Because I was in a period of thinking, like, I want to do a couple of cover songs. Sure. Uh, and I had an idea of what I was going to do. There was going to be a David Bowie track in there, but I kind of scrapped that idea. I might bring it up later, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, I Die, You Die kind of stuck in my head. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to try this. So then I kind of played around with it for a little while. And now it's finished. It is what it is. And it's coming out next month. Very and cool. Play, being played here. <laughs> awesome. So that's super exciting. It's almost an exclusive Pretty much, yeah. This, this is the debut. Like uh, I've teased it on social media before, but uh, the whole track hasn't been played yet. That's awesome. Now, when you're thinking of covering a song, how much are you trying to hit what they hit, and how much are you going to take their song but do your own industrial rock, frail state version of it? That is something I, I have constantly sat down and thought about because mm-hmm. I want to make it my own because I feel like those are the best kind of covers. Yeah. Like, but the problem is, when you get so comfortable trying to learn the song itself, you kind of play for beat for beat. Mm-hmm. So with I Die, You Die, it's it's more or less in the same structure, but it is heavier. I cha- shortened the beginning. I changed up the ending to be just this really fun kind of rock outro, whereas the the original kind of has, like, it kind of fades out into this quieter little piece with a piano. Uh, I change it so it's just, like, heavy guitars. So there's a guitar solo in there, and, yeah, it ends pretty... Like, abruptly, kind of. <laughs> awesome. So, I guess, without further ado, let's check this out. I Die, You Die, Frail State. And we'll be right back.
I die, you die, Frail State. And if you're just joining us now, Frail State, Chris, joining us in studio right now. Yep. And, yeah, that was your cover. Who, who's the cover of? Gary Newman. Gary Newman. Okay, so I'm not familiar with his music. Yeah, he did, he did like, the song uh, uh, Cars. Like, cars. here, my cover. Oh, uh, no, right, no, no, no. of course, yeah, of so course. That's what he'd be no, most known for. I Die, You Die is another big one, and he's got, like, Down in the Park, Our Friends Electric, stuff sure. like that. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's a, that's a really cool cover. Like, I really, I really dig that one. Yeah, thank you. And the next song that you wanted us to play was uh, Ritual. Yeah, I was originally going to have the song here again in this place, but uh, I was on the Steel City Music Show here on The Hawk mm-hmm. uh, back in June, and so and that song played, so I figured just maybe put out something new, because Ritual was originally supposed to be the second single after Fall Where They May. Cool. Awesome. So anything else you want to tell us about Ritual before we play it? Uh, yeah, Ritual I, It was a song where I kind of challenged myself a little bit to where I wanted to step out of the comfort zone, as I mentioned earlier, because I was kind of catching myself in the act of just like making things that... Kind of sounded too similar, but so I wanted something different. So this is a very like atmospheric kind of moody song, definitely quieter. It's not like one of the heavier tracks, um, and just like everything else on the EP, it's got a very personal story behind it because the whole EP kind of revolves around like a cycle, like being in a, like this vicious cycle of depression, everything like mm. anxiety, self-loathing. Like, uh, thankfully, I'm kind of like I don't want to say over that, but I'm more or less over it now. But it's like a reflection of a period in time. Cool. Yeah, and so this song is just kind of like um, basically just this inner battle with yourself like determining whether or not like you're actually feeling the way you are or something else is influencing it mm-hmm. like that's the best way to explain it now when you're writing this song is this coming from like a personal uh, I, point of view yeah more or less it's 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 kind of coming from me and like the feelings i had felt at that time yeah and so like the first half of the song is kind of like spoken and those those are the feelings in my head and the thoughts in my head the second half is kind of sung with a mm-hmm. cleaner voice and that's like me saying these things out loud type thing awesome so yeah, it's, it's a very personal and story that I'm pretty sure people can, some people can relate to. <laughs> That's fantastic. So let's let's check that one out. Ritual, frail state, and we'll be right back.
Ritual, Frail State of Mind. Or Frail State... Why did I say Frail State of Mind? Frail State of Mind is a song, and I keep finding that every time I try to search for Frail State on something. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> frail State, not yeah. to be confused with the other one. There you go, yeah, it's Frail State. <laughs> um... So if I feel a little bit frazzled, we had a, uh, a classmate of ours, Derek, who gave us some hot sauce and told us to try it. So this is where I hope my dad's going to hear it, because my dad loves hot sauce, and he's probably going to hear me do this. So let's do it real quick, because we got to go soon, but... Yeah. Huh? A little ASMR. Oh, jeez, that's oh, really, really, that really hot. Right away. <laughs> that is really hot. Okay, so that was a terrible idea to do on air, but hey, we got other people to talk to in a second, um, and that's what we do. We just kind of roll with things. Jeez, I'm starting to sweat. All right, so we're going to have Scared's coming up next. That's almost fitting, isn't it? Yeah. We will be right back. Chris Poor, Frail State, thank you. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Check out their music on Spotify and wherever. They're every, it's everywhere. Oh, yes, it is. It's on Spotify. <laughs> He's dying. So, yeah, so this hot sauce still got me. My ears are hot now. It's on Spotify, uh, iTunes, YouTube. You can pretty much find it anywhere. There's physical copies eventually coming as well. That's fantastic. All right, we'll talk to you guys in a bit.